welcome back to my latest pool breakout review. Tim here to break it all down for you. Make sure you destroy that like button. And yes, the doctor is in. And the doctor is about to operate. So lay down on my table and let me diagnose you. And I'll write you a prescription. And the prescription for your condition is subscribing to the channel because... We gotta talk more extensively, and one video isn't gonna do it, but in order to get your game to that next level, it's gonna take potentially multiple operations, and that's what we're gonna do here today. Uh, first procedure I'm gonna tell you is more practice. I mean, I feel like you guys aren't motivated to practice and put in the work that it takes to reach that next level. Okay, that shot down the, down the side. Um, you know, all these are, you know, just accuracy shots here. You know, you're gonna see a lot of fundamentals come into play. All right, lining it up, square shoulders. All right, my elbow stays fairly Still through the shot, stay down on the shot, follow through, okay? All the things I've been talking about. Make sure you have your dominant eye over the over the cue in the middle of it. Loose grip, all right? Don't be squeezing your fingers together as you shoot through the ball. Just keep it loose. You know, a little bit of wrist action is fine. At least I feel, you can see me just kind of using the wrist there a little bit, just kind of finding the groove, finding the sweet spot, okay, and your cue shaft should not go off kilter as you're shooting through the ball, okay, otherwise you need to sort of fix something about it, either you're gripping it too tight or um, using too much wrist or not enough wrist. I mean, just find it. Find that straight, smooth stroke that's repeatable, even when you have to stroke it fairly, fairly hard. Um, and if if it goes off kilter when when you shoot hard trying to put on draw, maybe maybe you're over stroking it. You know, maybe you're trying to overpower it too often. You know, just kind of go medium speed for a while until you really get the consistency down and the confidence down. All right, so work on some of those things. I mean, the, the amount of different things that you gotta think about are endless and it kind of creates a, a circle, you know, it's like, once you learn one thing and figure it out, you move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And then you go full circle to the point where you forgot to do the first thing that you started doing. And then you have to repeat kind of that. Start doing that again. And then the second thing that you learned, you've kind of forgotten to keep doing that. And then you start doing that again and you relearn it. And eventually all the different... Um, tips and tricks and techniques that you've learned to perfect your shot start to become second nature over time. Um, but you got to keep revisiting those same things. Sometimes it works good to kind of write down things like, oh, I need to keep, hold, just hold it loose as I'm stroking through. Okay, I need, you know, I need to remember that because sometimes I forget and then, you know, six months later I relearn it and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I was doing that. Sometimes just writing it down, you know, helps solidify it in your memory. Uh, let's see here. Some of these are pretty easy, but again, it's about the consistency and the execution. Also, you want to leave the cue ball in the right place. You know, speed is important. All right, here. Um, you know, I'm looking at this one for a minute because... Hit that five ball in. It's like, where's the cue ball going to go? In between those other two balls? Or 
right into the nine. So my inclination is to put draw on this and just go right into the nine ball. And um, so the cue ball just kind of sits in the middle and then kind of bumps the nine out of the way. It's kind of just in the way there. And what could obviously go wrong is it stays kind of in my way in between me and the green ball down there. But yeah, unfortunately it's, I mean, fortunately it's slightly out of the way, so I do have a shot. But that, that was kind of my thought process there. And I figured even if it did get in the way of that shot, you know, I still had potentially the red ball I could cut in or the black one here. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to get that one out of the way a little bit. And, um, I didn't want to like go in between the balls and not really have any idea where the cue ball was going to end up. So here I liked just drawing it back and then I got a nice little angle on the three ball. Okay, and now it's just a matter of, I could set it up for the eight ball, but then it makes it more difficult to set it up for the, for the nine ball on the last shot. So I kind of want to use this opportunity with this nice angle to just go up and down the table and get on the nine ball and just leave that at eight for the last one. And uh, hit it too hard, apparently. My speed has been like so off, man. It's, speed is like, you gotta think about it because, you know, you might as well get your speed right in case you make the shot and then you know, you got to think about your future, the future of your your rack and how it's going to play out. You can't just sell out every time on, on making a shot and not worrying about leave. Which I was thinking about leave, but I don't know. I mean, that cue went a long way, all the way up and down the table. It's like, man, I didn't even hit it that hard. So here... Um, Thought about going for the eight ball, but I'm like, both shots are actually kind of tough. So I figured, try to, but this one just kept rolling and rolling too. So, yeah. So, didn't work out exactly as, as I was hoping. I just didn't see like a great way to ensure setting up for the nine if I, if I hit the eight in first. But should, if I'm um, teaching what I preach or practicing what I preach or whatever, I should probably make this. There we go. 